today my topic is Azure Data Bricks. So before starting, I just would like to uh, introduce myself first. So, uh, sorry, I put the slide. So this is my introduction. My name is Martin Singh. So I'm from Nepal. Right now I'm staying in Nepal. I have total year of 10 years of experience, more than 10 years of experience. Uh, I have experience in multiple fields, big data engineering. I started my career as web development, but now uh, for like like for last uh, six to seven years, I'm involved in big data engineering, database development, and uh, data modeling. Like uh, basically, you can say uh, everything related to data. And my current designation is I'm a senior big data engineer in Prudential Insurance, Singapore. So. So basically, we have very short time. So I would like to start. So, so my today's topic is big data, basically. So everyone heard about big data. Like in your daily life, you you must have heard about big data and data engineering, data modeling, database. So, uh, so first of all, for uh, this uh, my topic, there are some prerequisites. You should have basic knowledge of data like what is data so we have very short window so i will keep it very short very simple so basically data is everything like whenever you create a software we have a database you save something you show uh, you you create a form in your web application and the user fill that form and then user click submit then you store that data so so this kind of like everything uh, on a web page, on your mobile application, whenever you start your camera, whenever you start your mobile phone, there are transaction logs, everything is data. So now what is the difference between data and big data? So uh, so if we talk about data, so like, uh, can you imagine your life 10 years before? So 10 years before there was like, uh, you know, uh, mobile phones, there, there was no mobile phone revolution, like uh, one out of 20 people like has one mobile phone. So there was no data. Nowadays, if you will see, you are uploading daily YouTube videos, you are uploading mobile for, uh, sorry, uh, photographs. You are daily talking to your friends. You are daily chatting. You are doing WhatsApp uh, messaging. So everything is data. And now amount of data is so much that you cannot, uh, you know, process that conventionally. Conventionally means uh, if you, because all, uh, most of the time, I, I'm not sure whether you are uh, like uh, experienced or, but if you have experience, like if you have ever worked with data 10 years before, it was very simple. Your database was like 20 MB, 25 MB. And let's say very big, um, let's say 500 MB or 600 MB. So that amount of data was very easy to process by a single system. But now, like daily we have trillions of data, like trillions of record, terabytes of data. So even like only one Facebook, it process more than terabytes of data. So the one like who don't know about terabyte, terabyte means like, you know, like bytes, MB, GB, T. And there are some organizations, they are announcing like they, are, they will be processing petabytes of data. That means 1024 into terabytes. So it's very big amount of data. And if you know uh, your, your server or let's say your system, your system has maximum like 320 GB of uh, hard disk, let's say one terabytes of uh, hard disk. And let's say if we talk about server, let's say our server has 10 terabytes of hard disk or like 300 terabytes of, but still they have limited RAM of 500 MB, 700 MB. Then how they are going to process this kind of, you know, this amount of data. So, so basically when you have, so what is big data? So if you will talk about any number, like any formula, like, okay, if your data is more than this amount, then it's big data or then it's not. So big data is a term, it's very vague term. It's not very clear term. So if you have some data, which is, which cannot be solved by your traditional computers, then it's a big data for you. For example, if you will, if I give you one GB of data, then you will say, okay, it's a big data because it's in GBs, but maybe that data is not like in that big data category for Facebook or for Google or for IBM. So basically big data is the amount of data which your conventional system cannot process. So that is called a big data. 
So if you will see my points, it's large complex data. And there are three kinds. We categorize big data into three categories, structured data, unstructured data, and semi-structured. Sorry, I repeat it. It should be semi-structured. So, uh, so basically traditional software cannot process very huge amount of data. That's why we need big data frameworks, which we'll talk about later and cannot be stored in traditional computers, which I already explained to you. And there is not fixed number, which I just said. So it's big data for you, but may maybe like it's not big data for someone else. So before this uh, presentation, I would like, like, I hope you know what is, what is database, what is data, what is RDBMS, okay? And uh, distributed system, if you don't know, I will explain this. So basically our, my whole seminar is revolving around this distributed system and hope you know basic SQL. Okay, so nowadays in big data, we have, so how we categorize, like how we know that this, the, so whenever we have some data, like we have big data, let's say you have terabytes of data. So before, uh, you know, you have a problem, you have to solve that, like you have to move that data and process the data, analyze the data. So before starting anything, you have to understand first all these things. So there are three V's of big data. These are conventional V's and later, like uh, I think two or three years before, they added two new V's. So how you will, uh, you know, uh, you can say assess your data. So first V is volume. So volume means how much data do you have? So you cannot like, okay, in, in a software world, you cannot simply, okay, I will give you one problem and you cannot simply, you know, draw your laptop or computer, open your, uh, you know, programming interface and start coding. So you have to understand, like in, in market, there are multiple languages, Java, .NET, C Sharp, Node.js, JavaScript. So how will you choose? So before choosing any framework, you have to categorize, you have to first assess your problem you have to understand what is your problem and which framework can solve that problem. You cannot say Java is better than C Sharp or C Sharp is better than you can say Flutter. So all are existing in the market and all have a, you know, a specific, uh, uh, you know, task, a specific goal, you can say. So before starting any problem related to big data, we have to understand what is the volume of data? Like what is the amount of data, uh, whether our data is in GBs or TBs or petabytes or, or in just MBs and what is the velocity? V velocity means rate at which data is received. That means whether you are receiving that data daily or weekly or maybe hourly or maybe like real time. Uh, if you know real time, that mean, uh, you know, like sensors, you have light sensors, you have seen many devices like pacemaker and uh, traffic signal. So they send, you know, data in every five seconds, two seconds, three seconds, depend on the frequency. So you have to understand what is the velocity of our data. Based on that, you will uh, choose your framework. Then variety. Variety, again, I said there are three kinds of data structured, semi-structured, and unstructured. Then based on this data, you will choose which framework and which kind of storage you have to save, you have to use to save your data. And then recently uh, developers, they added two new Vs. V means value and veracity. So value mean, suppose you have 50 terabytes of data. And uh, if you don't know about uh, database processing, it takes, uh, you know, sometimes it takes more than, you know, one week to process data. Even in my organization, I have some, uh, some kind of like data pipelines, which takes more than 48 hours just to process data. So, so if you are understanding like how your software will run for 48 hours. So traditionally we use cloud, uh, we use Azure. So basically for 48 hours, literally 48 hours, your process is running and transferring data, processing data. So before doing all this trouble, you have to understand whether this data has value or not. So it, like, like suppose you are processing terabytes of data and spending one month developing that framework. But after all this trouble, you will get to know like this is useless. So definitely. Yeah. like obviously you will get fired. Sorry to say directly, but you will get fired. So you have to understand the value of data. And third is veracity. Veracity means accuracy of data. 
so so all of you, you uh, all of you like including me we use whatsapp we use uh, uh, you know uh, facebook so sometimes you see like um, online facebook post like okay nepal is going to be next singapore in 6 months or india is going to be next singapore in 5 months okay so you are receiving data that's fine because it's a kind of data it's a kind of information you are storing in your mind but whether it is accurate or not you don't know because someone is writing someone is using a using a you know photoshop creating an image and posting on facebook and you are believing that okay so you have to understand from where that data is coming whether the source is trustworthy or not if it is not then you should not go for you know all those trouble which i told you before so these are the five ways which you have to you know use to assess your framework to assess your data to choose a particular framework because in data engineering also we have multiple framework like software developer so i was talking about types of data so you can see we have three kind of structured semi structured and unstructured data so okay what is this so structured means we have a particular format already defined predefined so for example if you have ever done uh, sql server if you have ever used sql server what you do uh, or oracle or mysql what you do you first create a table and then when you use insert command then in insert command you have to mention uh, your uh, values of the table like values for those particular column in that you know uh, in that same order which columns are defined or you have to like so you know before inserting you know like our table has this particular structure for example you have a table of employee and you are uh, and th there are three columns like first name last name and department so every time when you are inserting records you have to put first name last name and department you cannot add one more extra column in insert command like first name last name the department and uh, salary no to define that first you have to add one more column in your table so you have a pre structure you have a structure pre defined you cannot break that structure that is called structured data example if uh, we talk about example then mysql mysql and uh, sql server microsoft sql server oracle these are the example and uh, second one is semi structure so i hope you know about csv files json file xml files no sql dbs okay let's talk about json file and csv file so you know json in json you can add many keys and it's a kind of key value pair so if if uh, if i'll show you an example sorry i did not create so so this is a json okay so this is a json so in json you can add as many column you want with the comma separated so basically you you have a flexibility to add columns dynamically your one json is like let's say one json is like this and uh, mati ji you need to see here ah okay 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 sorry sorry ppt is on can you see now yeah okay so sorry so this is a kind of uh, example of json so so in json when you store json in database so json has a flexibility you can add one more column let's say uh, let's say okay you can add one more column but again when you are creating a json you have to follow some kind of syntax like you have to follow this comma if you will remove this comma then it's an invalid json so basically what i'm trying to say it is a structure it is structured but not completely you can add dynamic values you can add dynamic key value pairs so this is the example of semi structured and unstructured data means which does not have a particular structure that mean video audio image so you don't know like uh, how how you will store image in your database you will create either you will store image in a folder and if you want to create image in a database then you will create a base64 then it does not it's a plain text so basically unstructured does not have a 
particular structure. You cannot define a structure. So these are primarily three kinds of data which you will be dealing and more than 80, more than not 80, even more than 95% in real life, you will be dealing with structured and semi-structured. So unstructured is like, um, in my entire career, I have de dealt with unstructured only once. So you can imagine that. Okay, so what is big data engineering and like what kind of responsibilities it includes? So in big data, Data engineering, we manage ETL. So ETL basically, it's an alien term for you maybe. So ETL means extract, transform, and load. So what is that? Okay, so what is that? I'll tell you exactly. So I hope you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. So what is ETL? So ETL basically stands for extract, transform and load. So in real scenario, what happens? You have multiple database, okay? Let's say, okay, my drawing is bad. So you have multiple sources. One, source one, source two, source three. Let's say you have an organization and your organization, uh, let's say you have a um, health industry organization and you have different kind of data, like you, are, you have a mobile application you have some web APIs, you have some web application, you have some IoT device like your, uh, like, you know, Apple Watch, okay? So all produce different kind of database, all produce different format of database. So that data, when, uh, when your application collect that data, that data is actually no use for you. It's like junk. It's like you are storing data, but you don't know what's inside the data. So let's say you have three systems. This is mobile application, this is web application, and this is your IoT device. And all has different database. So in big data engineering, what we do, we try to extract. So first in ETL, first is extract. So we extract all this data and we process this data. And so process means transform, which is T. So now again, what, what is the question like? What is transformation and what is process? So basically in this step, what we do, we extract data from different sources. We extract only the data which is useful. For, a, for example, basic example, in your uh, application, in your uh, application you store, in your database you store ID, you store, uh, let's say, is active status true, false. So this kind of data is actually not useful for analysis. And if you know, in big data, we are talking about GBs and TBs of data. So if you can remove one column from your, uh, you know, uh, source database, then it will save sometimes GB, sometimes MBs of data, is storage. And uh, storage means you are saving money because in cloud, you have to pay. If you are saving 10 MB and if you are saving 10 GB, then you have to pay more in case of 10 GB. So you have to, <clears throat> plus you will save money, plus when you will process. So just think about like, if you, if I'll give you 10 breads and I'll give you two breads, you will finish two bread first. So you have to remove extra data, which is of no use from the database so that you can save your cost and increase your speed or performance of your uh, data pipelines. So in processing or transformation step, we combine data, we make joins, we extract useful data, and we, you know, remove duplication, duplicate data, we remove useless data. And then finally, in short, you can say we clean the data. And after cleaning the data, what you will do for the you know, uh, clean data. So when you have clean data, like final output, what will you do? You have to use that data for further analysis that you will save in a final database. This is low step. So in real scenario, most of the cases, this will be either structured or semi-structured and 99% this will be structured. So this is your whole ETL pipeline.
extract extract mean extracting from different sources transform that mean transform all those data to extract only required number of records required column and clean data and that final clean data will be load to your destination so this is our whole etl pipeline so this is first and major role of uh, big data engineering second is data warehousing and data lake uh, this will be i think um, i think we have limited window so very in very short i will explain so database is basically when your application stores data when you use mobile application or you fill any form on uh, web application it goes to your oltp uh, in in simple database which we call oltp system that mean online transaction protocol okay uh, so that is your oltp system but for analysis you have to combine all those data clean data and uh, restructure data and see that data to data warehouse so if you will see gen uh, like generical uh, term data warehouse is also a database but the structure of the database is different the structure of data is different so data warehouse is used more for analysis for final analysis but in short if you will see in generic term it's a it's a kind of database and data lake uh, in short uh, i'll explain you so data lake basically um, it's a kind of storage raw storage like before processing before starting over etl pipelines you have different kind of data sometimes you have text files sometimes you have database sometimes you have image data then you store all these multiple like it's a kind of real lake in lake what happens you have stone you have insects you have fish many things so all kind of different data heterogeneous data you can store in data lake okay this third point is uh, basically uh, uh, data governance process so data governance process is mean like uh, when you store your data uh, suppose you are you you use mobile application you use a uh, banking application then it's sensitive data you store your uh, data uh they store your data definitely they store your credit card pin they store your credit card number your bank and they store your account details they, so all these information are you know confidential then there are set of rules and there are set of you know permissions and uh, rules and permissions that you have to maintain like okay this kind of data is particularly visible visible to only for the developer this kind of data is only visible to administration so this kind of roles and governance also you have to maintain and now right now uh, if uh, you read about like technical blogs and all data engineering big data engineering machine learning and data analysis these are the you know most popular platforms most popular popular and highest paid jobs one of the highest paid job i will not say most but yeah one of the highest paid jobs plus one of the most important job in you know 21st century and it has a big future okay so so what is so when you deal about big data again the question comes you have um, uh, you know terabytes of data and now you want to you know process that obviously your laptop your system will not do and we don't have you know uh, systems except the supercomputers we don't have computers which have terabytes of ram or maybe we have but it's very costly if not not everyone can afford so how you deal with this kind of big data this kind of like huge amount of data then again it's a new topic distributed system so those who knows very good those who doesn't know like i will explain to you so when you uh, like suppose you are using a laptop you are developing a software you use your single laptop okay and let's say you are processing some data in your system so what will happen that process will use your particular ram your laptop's ram only your laptop's ram because uh, that application is running on your ram but how is it possible like a system with like 8 gb or 16 gb ram can process terabytes of data for that we have to introduce distributed system so what we do in distributed system 
so distributed system it's a kind of network of computers so let's say we have six computers or let's say if example we have four computers so in conventional what happened you have a problem you assign to your computer and your computer solves simple uh, nothing complex now in distributed what happened it's a kind of network computer network so you assign a problem we have master and worker nodes uh, some people use slave term also for this but it's not recommended on international level because of uh, racism so when you assign a problem to your application and you start your application it will assign to a master so this master is a computer so master and workers they all are computers but your problem will start here then you will start your problem will assign to master and then what master will do master will identify the resources let's say in short you have four computers then what you will do master will break down your problem it's a kind of divide and rule it's called divide and rule divide and conquer so master will divide your problem in four parts let's say uh, for example you have a, you have to find the sum of one all the numbers between 1 to 100 then what master will do master will do okay this is the first system you count 1 to 25 sum of 1 to 25 you count 26 to let's say 50 you count 51 to um, let's say 80 and you count 81 to 100 then all four system parallelly will calculate their sum and then finally they will combine the answer and will give you the final result so what is the advantage okay again what is the advantage so it's kind of you are four people and i say okay just prepare the food so one have to prepare for like prepare chapati and you are alone you have to prepare rice you have to prepare dal you have to prepare chapati and you have to prepare let's say uh, pickle acha so if you will do all this alone you will take a long time because you have to do everything by yourself but now i give you four more people to help then what you will do you can uh, you know take their help you will so one guy will help you to create rice or prepare rice one will prepare uh, dal achar like this so in this way all the four people will work parallelly and instead of taking a long time you will finish quicker earlier it's more efficient so that is why we use distributed system for the big data processing okay so what is the pros and cons like what are the benefits of uh, distributed system so obviously i explain you efficiency it's more efficient than doing like a single computer processing all the things to get alone it's obviously it's better four computer doing the same task simultaneously parallelly so it will be faster second it's fault tolerance and redundancy so uh, fault tolerance and redundancy so when you have a distributed system uh, let's say you are using you have a database in your own system okay now we are talking about single system and your laptop crashes or your window gets corrupted and you lose your data what will happen you will lose your database because you have to reinstall window but in case of a distributed system what happen the master node it saves it takes it creates a backup of uh, your data in worker nodes like suppose you have a main database here let's say here then it will create a one like two or three copies here in worker node so let's say in future this master node crash or one of the worker node get crash still you have backup of data latest copy of data then you can easily restore second low latency obviously it is more efficient than definitely your latency means uh, responding time so your application responding time will be less that means it will be faster four is cost effective okay now there must be a question you will say okay i have one computer if i'll uh, use distributed system then i have to buy five computers then how it is cost effective it's a, it's a very common question and the answer is yes when you are setting up uh, this will be come in cons when you are the setting up the, when you are setting up this initial system then your cost will be high 
but in future it will be less how let's say you bought a new laptop uh, buying 100000 1 lakh rupees and it has a ram of 16 gb and now you are in college and you are processing data and it's working fine suddenly you pass out and you know you go in the real world and now you realize that you have to process data or you have to create some application which is not possible in this laptop then what will you do then you have to buy a new laptop that mean and 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 that new laptop will be you know will have a, you know higher configuration than your existing that mean more than 100000 but in a distributed system what happen let's say same example now you like you have one laptop again now you realize like uh, you have to process more data which is uh, not possible in your current laptop then what will you do you will simply and and let's say your laptop can process only 100 gb of data and you have to process 120 gb of data that means only 20 gb so now in your scenario in single system scenario you have to buy a new laptop that can process 120 gb but in case of distributed system your laptop can process 100 gb now you can add a new machine in the network which can process only 20 gb that means cheaper you don't have to buy a laptop which is you know more expensive than your previous one so in this way in future it will cost you less okay so there are some cons also which i told you higher initial cost so obviously uh, when you you know process uh, set up the system you have to buy you know whole network you have to buy more than one system that will uh, initially it will cost you more and security concerns how so if you have one system you have to take care of simply if you have one system if you have one house you have to take care of one house you have to clean one house if you have five house you have to clean five house so then obviously you have one laptop you have to take care of one laptop or one computer but now you have five computers you have to take care of five computers so that's why there are security concern and you have to deal with security okay so uh in short okay so this is the basic idea for the distributed system so we have uh like now you know the basic concept of big data and distributed system so there are some software there are some frameworks which is used to process big data so one of the most famous and popular you can search on google also is apache spark so basically apache spark also work on distributed uh, framework so if you will see it's a kind of framework which analyze your data parallelly okay you can see the distribute word here okay so apache spark also follows distributed computing system so you can see this is the architecture of um, apache spark you see you submit your application here okay let's say you have a problem you have to process 10 gbs of data you will submit your application to spark context this is called the driver program and then there is an application called cluster manager it will assess your data and problem and find out okay how many resources i have available so you can see there are two working nodes so it will say okay i have two computers so then it will divide your problem in these two computers in form of executors executor means us let's say uh, you have to find uh, first you have to find you have to multiply two numbers and so there are four numbers you have to multiply them and then add them then this cluster manager what it will do it will divide problem into two sections it will assign this computer it will say okay you do multiply and you do plus and then at last they will perform their um, task and they will combine the result same concept as the distributed system which we understood here so nothing new same okay so apart so what so there is a term if you have heard like there is a term data bricks so data bricks is an online platform which uses apache spark as platform 
uh, if you have heard TAS platform as service. So it will use Apache Spark to process your data. And why it is better? It is on cloud. So that means you can dynamically, you know, increase the size of uh, your RAM, increase the size storage, and you, you don't have to depend on your laptop. Suppose you shut down your laptop or your laptop gets corrupted. You can, you know, use another laptop. Everything is on cloud and uh, you don't have to worry about the security. Cloud will take care of the security. So this is kind of a platform, platform as service. Okay, so this is the, um, uh, I know, the, so we have a very limited time window. So this was the introduction to distributed, uh, you know, system. So if you have any doubt, okay, so, so all the code and everything I provide in my repository, okay. And uh, I, I keep updating my repository. There are many things in my repository. You can go there. This repository is free of cost, okay. And I uh, provide paid tutorial, paid courses also. You can go, you can contact me if you are interested in anything, okay. So if you want to connect with me, this is my, you know, LinkedIn URL. You can email me on this. This is my GitHub repository. So like, I, I know it's a very small section. So I was very quick, very fast because, you know, we have time limitations, so we cannot explain everything here. But yeah, uh, trust me, the, the, the distributed system and big data engineering, data analyst, these fields are vast and very important and very, you know, glamorous jobs. So if you are ever interested and you want to know more about that, follow me on LinkedIn and you can ask anything about the, you know, anything related to all these platform to me. That's it. Thank you. That's it from my side. So, uh, thank you so much, uh, Martin Ji.